updating the metric of transportation impact, full counting of VMT. When assessing trip-based VMT under CEQA, include the full trip, even if it goes beyond a jurisdictional boundary. Some modeling and inventory practices have truncated trips, for example, at a jurisdictional or regional boundary. Sometimes this has been done for modeling convenience. In other cases, inventories must sum across jurisdictions to a regional or statewide total. However, summing across jurisdictions isn't needed in CEQA analysis. In CEQA analysis, truncation causes bias. First, truncation leads to worse undercounting for projects near the edge. Second, it leads to worse undercounting for projects which generate longer trips. Third, it causes underestimation of the threshold of significance. As a result, truncation biases both project analyses and determinations of thresholds of significance. The bias is more permissive for high VMT outlying development and more restrictive to low VMT infill development. In a similar manner, discounting cross-boundary trips, for example, by counting only half of the VMT from such trips, also leads to a biased assessment and bias thresholds. Like truncation, discounting leads to worse undercounting for projects near the edge and projects which generate longer trips, and leads to underestimation of the threshold. These effects also create a permissive bias for outlying development and restrictive bias for infill. But doesn't counting trips all the way to their destination in another jurisdiction mean you're double counting them? Since neighboring jurisdictions would also count those trips, The answer is that some cross-boundary trips may in fact be counted in each jurisdiction, but trips between jurisdictions would also be counted in each jurisdiction when developing the thresholds. Project VMT is held up against threshold VMT, and if both are based on full counting, the judgment of whether the project has a significant impact will be fair and accurate. But why can't truncated project VMT com be compared to truncated baseline VMT? Wouldn't truncated to truncated be an apples-to-apples -apples comparison? Technically, it would be an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but it would still be biased. Again, truncation and discounting tilt the playing field, creating a permissive bias for outlying development and a restrictive bias for infill. So projects should assess full trips, and full trips should be assessed when developing a threshold that would be applied to a project. But is it important to assess full trips for the development of a plan? Yes, it is important to count VMT impacts from plans over full trips, over the full area the plan affects travel patterns. Consider a plan like this one with more dispersed development. Truncating VMT analysis at the plan boundary would leave more VMT uncounted, while a more infill-focused plan like this one would count a greater share of its VMT. That's a bias. Also, OPR recommends applying thresholds for projects to new development specified in the plan. The plan VMT to threshold VMT comparison also needs to be apples to apples, so both should represent full counting. For retail and transportation projects, OPR recommends studying the change in overall VMT resulting from the project. Assessments for such projects should assess the change in VMT across the full area over which the project affects vehicle travel patterns. If travel patterns are substantially affected outside of the area of analysis, the area of analysis should be expanded to include the full affected area. OPR has additional information, including detailed guidance, reports, and research pertinent to VMT assessment on its website.